In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to stars, what they are, how they produce energy, and how we classify them. So we've all seen stars at night, but do you know what a star actually is? Well, we know that we on Earth, we have a star, and that, of course, is the sun. The sun, like all stars, is a huge sphere of hot, glowing plasma held together by gravity. You probably don't know very much about plasma, and that's because we don't have plasma on Earth. On Earth, all matter is in the form of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. But in space, there is a fourth state of matter called plasma. A lot of people incorrectly think that the sun is on fire or that stars burn, and they don't burn. There's no fire. It is a fourth state of matter known as plasma. Here's an actual photograph of the sun taken by NASA. And you'll notice that it is a sphere, it is round. And you'll notice certain parts are brighter, other parts are darker or dimmer. You'll notice there are bursts of energy, bursts of light coming off of the surface. And we're gonna take a closer look at those in the next few days. But this is a photograph of the sun. So if you remember back from our study of energy, Stars generate energy through a process called nuclear fusion. What they do is they take hydrogen atoms and they fuse them together. They combine them together. When hydrogen atoms are combined, the result is helium and energy. And that energy is the light and the heat that we get from the sun. All stars create energy this way. When you look up at stars at night, they pretty much all look the same. They look like little pinpoints of white light. Human eyes are not sensitive enough to really see what stars look like. But if you were to go outside with a digital camera and take a photograph, you would get a photo that looks like this. It's pretty amazing, right? So right away, you notice that stars come in many different colors. There are red stars. There are blue stars, there are yellow stars, there are white stars. So how do you think we classify them? How do you think we group them? Well, one way that we group them is based on their color. What do you think the color of a star indicates? Well, on Earth, we know that fire comes in several different colors. And we know that blue flames are hotter than red flames. Even though stars are not made of fire, we infer that stars work the same way. We make the inference that the blue stars are the hottest and the red stars are the coolest. And that's one of the ways that we classify stars based on their temperature. And the temperature we infer based on the color. The second way that we classify stars is by looking at their luminosity or how bright they appear compared to our sun. Now, you have to understand, most stars that we see are so far away that we can't accurately tell how bright they are, but we can compare their brightness to our sun. So what astronomers have done is they've created a chart which is used to classify stars. This is called the Hertzsprung-Russell, or the HR diagram, named after the scientists that came up with this. On the x-axis, we have the surface temperature of the stars, and that corresponds to the color of the star. On the y-axis, we plot the luminosity, or how bright the star is compared to the sun. And so we end up with different classifications, different groupings of stars, based on these characteristics. Now, we actually have a modified version of this in our reference table on page 15. So let's spend a little bit of time learning how to use this. I'm going to start with the right side of the graph. On the right side, it shows us the size of the stars. Starting at the bottom, we have the smallest stars, and those are classified as dwarfs. As you move up the chart, the stars get bigger and bigger and bigger. When we're in this area here, we're at stars called giants, and stars that are even more massive are known as supergiants. On the left side of the graph, we plot the luminosity, 
or how bright a star appears relative to the sun. So let's find our sun. If you look at the stars that are named on here, you'll notice that our sun is sort of right here in the middle. And that's because the sun is really just an average star. It's not very big, it's not very small, it's not very bright, it's not very dim, it's just sort of average. You'll also notice that the luminosity of the sun, we say, is 1. Because we're going to compare everything to it. So we've assigned it a nice easy number. So I'm going to put a red line here where the sun is. Basically, any star above that red line is larger than the sun and therefore brighter. Any star below the red line is smaller than the sun and dimmer. Now let's take a look at the x-axis. We have two things on the x-axis. First, we have the surface temperature. And notice that temperature is being measured in Kelvin. Unlike most graphs, the zero is not at the bottom left corner. On this graph, we actually start with the hottest temperature that we believe stars to be, which is 30,000 Kelvin. And as we move to the right, the temperatures get lower and lower and lower. The colors are also shown on here, and the colors correspond to the temperatures. So I'm going to put another red line to look at the temperature of the sun. So if we come straight down, you'll notice the temperature of the sun is somewhere between 5,000 Kelvin and 6,000 Kelvin, and that creates a yellow color. So our sun is a yellow star. Let's look at some of the other stars on here. Let's look at Polaris. We've learned a lot about Polaris this year. So in terms of brightness or luminosity, Polaris is much brighter than the sun. And that's because Polaris is a giant star, whereas the sun is not. The sun is part of what's known as the main sequence. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. So Polaris is much bigger. It's much brighter. But it's basically the same temperature as the sun. It's right around 6,000 Kelvin. So Polaris is also a yellow star. Let's look at this giant star called Aldebaran. Aldebaran, being a giant, is much brighter than the sun. It's about a thousand times as luminous. But you'll notice if we look at the temperature, it's actually cooler. It's approximately 4,000 Kelvin which gives it an orange color. I want to give you an idea of the size difference between our sun and a giant like Aldebaran. This image is a scale picture showing our sun versus a giant. It's a huge difference. Now keep in mind, Aldebaran is a giant. It's not even a super giant. Super giants would be so much bigger than the sun. So let's take a look at this constellation. This is the constellation Orion. Some of you may be familiar with Orion. It's fairly easy to find, especially in wintertime, by looking for the three stars that form Orion's belt. And here's a picture showing a drawing of what Orion is supposed to look like. Orion is the hunter. And so he's holding a shield in front of him. And here are the three stars that form his belt. I want to take a look at one star up here called Betelgeuse which is part of Orion's shoulder. And then I want to look at Rigel, which is one of Orion's feet. So if we take a look at an actual photograph, you'll notice that Betelgeuse has a reddish orangish color. Rigel kind of looks more bluish or whitish. Let's find those stars on the reference table and let's see what they are. Okay, so Betelgeuse is up here. Betelgeuse is a super giant. And if we come down to the temperature, it is sort of in the reddish or orangish area of the graph. Rigel is also a supergiant, but it's much hotter. The temperature is a little bit more than 10,000 Kelvin, which puts it between white and blue white. So that's why these stars are those colors. So Betelgeuse is a supergiant, Rigel, also a supergiant, but it's blue-white. I want to give you an idea of how big Betelgeuse is. So Betelgeuse is this shoulder of Orion, and here's an image of it. 
This is the size of Betelgeuse. This is the size of Earth's entire orbit. This is the whole path of Earth around the sun. This star is significantly larger than the entire Earth's orbit, which just is mind-blowing to think about. Here's Jupiter's orbit. So if you think about Jupiter's path around the sun, this star is almost twice the size of Jupiter's orbit. We're going to look at some more stars like that in class, but I want to show you one more diagram. This is another scale model of some stars. This tiny dot over here, that's our sun. Our sun is just an average star. Here's Sirius, Pollock, and it goes on and on. Here's Aldebaran that we looked at before. Check out the size of Betelgeuse compared to the sun. And Betelgeuse is not even the largest star. There are other stars even more massive. It's crazy to think about. So over the next few days, we're going to explore stars some more. We're going to learn about the galaxy and other galaxies that exist in space. And you're going to learn about how scientists have learned a lot of what we currently know and what we think we know. Because what we think we know is not always the case. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.